going to show you the trusses now and attaching the lift strut pieces. I have already done this and I did it incorrectly, so I'm scrapping all of the video that I shot for that and I'm redoing this. I actually had to order new parts <laughs> because I made a stupid mistake. You know, I just didn't I just didn't read the manual closely. I just kind of made some assumptions as I was skimming through and I really should have paid attention to detail. Here's what I did wrong. What you're supposed to do is take one of these fittings here. Uh, they are drilled to 3 sixteenths. These are quarter inch, right? Well, the reason they do that is because you can't do a weldment here and hold the same tolerances that you do on a machined component. So you open up one of the holes to quarter inch, set it on there, bolt it up, and then you come back and drill through the opposite side, put another bolt and do the other two. That way you're opening up these holes, but they may not be concentric with the holes that are already there, just because of the way the weldment ends up not being perfect. Well, in my haste, I just saw that the manual said open up to, to quarter inch. I didn't really pay attention that it said one of the holes. So I proceeded to just open them all up to quarter inch. Well, uh, they didn't line up. Uh, they were off just a little bit. So when I noticed that and I read the manual, I'm like, oh crap. I went to go ahead and drill back drill through it just to see how far off I was. These two holes were fine. Those lined up perfectly, but these two did not. And you can see what ends up happening. Look at, it really opened up there way too much. Look at that. This is supporting the weight of the aircraft. This, this interface here, there's a lot of load right there. And as I had done this, I really would have been counting on just these two bolts until a deformation would have happened to a point where it would have made contact on these other side of these holes and it would have started grabbing, but no way, we're not doing that. So my mistake, I had to order up new parts. Rand's got these to me very quickly, fortunately. I ordered them and within a week, I had them here in the shop. So I am gonna redo this and I'm gonna show you how you're supposed to do it. Um, yeah, sometimes you make mistakes and when you do, uh, you, especially on a component like this, you better redo the work um, rather than just leaving it. You know, in all honesty, you probably could have left that and it probably would have been okay, but do you really want to take chances on something as critical as a component as this? I don't think so. Let's get to it. All right, I've got two of these bolted together with three A and threes. Got one hole left unbolted and that's the hole I'm gonna open up to a quarter inch. I got this just about set up. What I like about this vise, which I'm gonna be using for this operation, is it's got parallels kind of ground into the jaws. This is the brand here. I'm not even gonna to try to pronounce it. I believe it's made in Germany. Um, but what's nice is with those parallel ground type jaws, I can just set the part right in there. And I know that I'm getting a nice perfect uh, parallel uh, to the work surface or perpendicular to the drill. So I'm gonna go ahead get this ready to go and I'm going to open this hole up. By the way, I am not using a quarter inch drill bit like the manual says. The reason is when I mic the diameter of an AN4, they're not a quarter inch. 6.3 millimeter drill bit gets you exactly the size of an AN4. Least amount of slop here, the better. Next, the manual is calling for drilling this out from a 5 16 to a 7 16 um, What I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna go straight to 7 16 I'm gonna first open this up to 3 8 and then I'm going to go up to whatever size is going to let me use this reamer. This is an 11 millimeter reamer. And as it happens, 11 millimeter is exactly the size of an AN7 bolt um, with, with just a little bit of clearance that it should just be a slip fit. Again, um, just in keeping with trying to keep the tolerances as tight as possible, yet still be able to get the hardware in and out. So open this up first to three eighths or so, and then I'll see whatever it's gonna to take to open it up for this reamer here. And again, that's 11 millimeters. As I started to do this, I realized I wanna do something a little extra here. 
I've gone ahead and run a 5 16 drill bit through this hole. I'm going to go ahead and run my chuck all the way down to that. I'm going to tighten it down there. And then I'm going to go ahead and using the fixture plate here, I'm going to clamp the vise in this position um, so that I remain concentric at this position through these pieces when I do these opening up operations. All right, I've got this perfectly aligned with the drill bit here. Got the vise clamped down. So now I'm gonna do all my opening up operations without moving the setup here. I'll just be changing out the different bits and then the reamer at the end. So let's get this now. I can go up to the uh, 3 eighths. I gotta make sure I left enough vertical room that I could fit all the way up to the reamer up into the chuck and still clear the piece. So I checked that first and I've got all the room I need. Okay, that's three eighths. Let's take this bit out. I don't think I can go from three eighths straight to the reamer. Let's see, can I? You know what, I believe I can. I'll give it a shot. If it looks like it's too much bite, I'll open it up to uh, something larger. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, actually, I think this is gonna work. Cool, so 3 8 first, 11 millimeter should give me a nice perfect hole for that AN7, let's get it. You really want to uh, peck at it with these reamers. They don't, these straight flute reamers don't pull the chips out. There we go, that worked. All right, I'm gonna just do a little bit of a light deburr on both sides here. Just gonna hand do it with a little countersink bit. Just to get a little, there's a little burr. Mostly the burring was on the back side here. I'll, I'll put these on the drill press and do a proper chamfer here. But this is just to get those burrs out. I just wanna check the fit of the AN7. It is perfect. There is, I mean, no lateral play to speak of, but yet it's a slip fit. So if you want to do tight fitting, tight tolerance fits on your AN7s, go for the 11, 11 millimeters. Now on my truss, because I've already kind of gone through some of the operations here, I happen to know that this hole and this hole are exactly sized, spaced the same distance as they are on the machine component. So I can go ahead and safely, I can take this bolt out here, I can go ahead and open that up to the 6.3 millimeters. And at that point, I should be able to drop this down and bolt it with these two bolts here. Uh, and I'll actually go ahead and cinch it down with a nut uh, and really attach it there. That way it's good and secure. Then I can go ahead and flip it over and I'll run my drill bit on the lower tubes here um, through that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the 6.3 millimeter again. I can always go to quarter if I need. Uh, and I'll go ahead and open up those. And then I'll reverse that uh, on the bottom side, do the same thing. But let's get started first with uh, opening up this hole and get it ready to bolt up here. So I decided midway through the process, I wanted to change out the chuck that came with this drill, which is an okay chuck. Um, I wanted to change it out for my keyless precision chuck. This is made by Lambrick. And uh, I forget what they claim the runout is on this, but um, it's like in the microns, like it's crazy concentric here. 
I don't, I didn't have it on because I can't clamp down smaller than a two millimeter drill bit. And I was doing some smaller drill work on another project. So I had just my key chuck in there, but I mean, if I'm going to go for precision, I've got it, let's do it. So I've got that out of there. And let's just get this guy in. Let me get my mallet. Back at the truss here, I've got, still got them bolted together. I just want to check the fit, make sure that these two are the same spacing. They were on the last set, so uh, I've got that one in there and this should, there we go, just drops in place. So on my particular truss, those two are just like the machined part. It's these two that aren't. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, unbolt these. I'll put just one of them back on here. I'll bolt it up nice and secure. Then I'll come back through and back drill these two. I should mention too that at this point, once I do that, these pieces will be matched to this side of the truss or to either side. So I've labeled this B. I'm going to go ahead and mark this as part B. This I've labeled as part A, or I'm sorry, side A. And I'll label the other one as A. And also it'll matter which way they go here. So Wherever marking, if I put B here, that's gonna be face up to that B and so on on the other side, because now these will be matched sets. Okay, here's my setup. I've got my spoil board here that I'm gonna drill into when I drill through these tubes into the piece. And uh, I've just got the extra little parts here that I've just kind of shimmed up the piece so that it's all sitting pretty parallel to my work surface and it's steady. So I'm just gonna hand drill at this point because the tube is gonna kind of be my drill guide. That's a nice fit. Do this one now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these bolts out and put the proper size bolts in, which are longer, because I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to it, secure all that down, then flip it over and drill back through. temporarily using castle nuts here just because they're easy to uh, finger tighten. I will put the proper washers and nuts on after. One thing I just thought of is I'm going to loosen these back up just a touch and I want to drop the AN7 bolt through here through both of these and uh, get those, they, they sh hopefully <laughs> they should line right up. Let's see. Yes, it's a perfect fit. So I wanna leave this in here. Now I'll tighten these down. Now it's safe to flip this over. And then go ahead and drill through here now. I 
just gonna go ahead and run a bolt through here as well. Might as well do what I can to keep everything from not moving. That's a good, well, that's almost, it's, it's, a, it's a tight slip fit. That's nice. Let me get a nut on the back side of that. Perfect. Those holes are exact. So now I have an extremely tight toleranced interface between these uh, strut fittings, strut truss fittings, and the strut truss itself. The only thing I need to do here now is go ahead and take this assembly apart and put it back together with the proper hardware. I've got my washers and my lock nuts here. There we have it one strut truss complete fittings attached properly this time so these are scrap uh, i don't even really know if i could use them for much i'll save them for whatever um, but yeah don't make that mistake and uh, end up with oblong holes that are not tight tolerance on these fittings very important